Now, intelligence bureau sources are telling us that the modus operandi is to bring in Bangladeshis and Rohingyas via the open Indo-Nepal border. This is the latest that we are picking from IB sources where the land which is uninhabited parcels around highways of this region and are used to provide temporary shelter to illegal immigrants. Fake Aadhaar cards are made and illegal immigrants are then shown as part of the existing family trees of Muslim residents. In fact, the residents, in lieu of money, claim that the illegal immigrants are either someone's child who was living elsewhere since childhood and now has returned to his family base. Now, officials are saying that they are weeding out illegal immigrants once they have entered a family tree and that really becomes a difficult process. However, they are trying to go ahead and do this. This is the latest that we are picking from our IB sources where this particular part of the border has become very porous when it comes to illegal immigration and how we have learned through sources that people who are coming from the other side of the border, they go ahead and try to amalgamate within the community, try to fake uh, allegiance with a particular family in the region and that is how they get certain Aadhaar cards made all of three, this through illegal sources and then start to reside in our country. Officials are also claiming that uh, weeding out these illegal immigrants because of the fact that they go ahead and join a particular family which is already residing in the country becomes very, very difficult because it gets you know, highly difficult to try to distinguish who is really part of the country, who is not, when they go ahead and associate themselves with an already residing citizen of the country. However, this seems to be a phenomena that has been going on for some time. Remember, illegal immigration is a problem, uh, not just with the country, but also elsewhere in uh, all across the world. However, India is really facing a lot of that issue when it comes to uh, Bangladeshis and Rohingyas really crossing the border into India. My colleague Arunama, who has brought us that breaking news input, is joining me on the broadcast. Arunama, this seems to be big trouble for the authorities and of course something that uh, the intelligence also is going to go ahead and agree with that it becomes very difficult to go ahead and actually pick out these illegal immigrants once they have sort of amalgamated in the already existing families or the citizens of the country for that matter. Yeah, there are two challenges. One, if you get included in the family tree, how will it then be proved that yes. uh, you're a foreigner? Because then you will claim uh, that here is my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and they've all been living in India. So under uh, the, the relevant acts, as far as uh, citizenship is concerned, uh, he or she will be able to prove uh, that uh, the, he's not an illegal immigrant, uh, but a genuine Indian person. That's the first challenge. The second thing is, how do you really get to these people? What agencies are suspecting and what uh, police officials on the ground are also uh, confirming is that this is happening in double quick time. One way to pick them out is by their language. Because if you're coming from Bangladesh mm -hmm. or if you are a Rohingya, your language will be a dead giveaway. But because they are being settled on the Indo-Nepal border, on the no man's land in these illegal colonies uh, for a month or two or maybe more, it gives them time really to brush up on the language. And Anvita, our colleague who went on the ground, actually came across a few individuals who claimed that they were from Katihar, uh, but their accent, their language, not completely Bangladeshi, but not completely local either. Mm. So that is what the modus operandi is being suspected. That language, which could have been a giveaway, is being worked upon. Uh, f facial features, if you're coming in uh, from uh, Myanmar, if you're, if you're a Rohingya, your facial features could be a giveaway as well. But once the family says that this was my child who had gone to live, uh, you know, elsewhere with uncle or aunt, and he has now come, uh, come here... There is no reason for you to, to suspect or weed out any particular person. And then the third steps, as soon as the documents are made, uh, the allegation is that organizations like Popular Front of India then help these illegal immigrants translocate to states like Maharashtra, Karnataka, other parts of the country as cheap labor. So this is the modus operandi and these are huge challenges that the agencies on the ground are facing. Absolutely. Arunama, stay on with me. I'm also now joined... Uh on the broadcast by my colleague Anvit, who's brought us that exclusive ground report and also this uh, very, very important update, uh, you know, this, that are attributed to IB uh, sources, Anvit. The fact that Arunima was also throwing light on the fact that it becomes very difficult to actually weed out people who have crossed the borders and now staying uh, in turn legally through Aadhaar cards in India. 
Yeah, see, very much because, uh, like Arunima also mentioned, once they enter the family tree, it is very difficult for the agencies mm. to conduct any crackdown or, you know, or to identify them as foreign nationals and uh, to deport them or to take whatever legal actions that could be. Mm. Also, when we visited the areas, we went to Jogbani border, we went travel to Bela, which is around 50 kilometers away from there. We went, we, we traveled uh, along the border to all the villages and particularly in the Simanchal belt. And we saw the borders are so porous. When you go on the ground, it's 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 like an open field. And people are, you know, just walking uh, uh, sometimes in Nepal and then back in India. Also, there were times when a child who is cycling around, uh, he enters Nepal and then comes back. And there's no checking at many points. Okay. There are only 26 authorized trade routes across the Indo-Nepal border, which uh, spans uh, to some more than 1,700 kilometers in Bihar, Uttaran Uttarakhand, and uh, UP. And uh, across the 1,700 uh, there are uh, kilometers, there are only 26 uh, auth trade authorized routes through which you can pass. There are seven sanctioned integrated checkpoints through which third national countries need to report when they're entering either of the countries. Only two of these uh, check posts are operational right now. Both of them are in Bihar. We visited one of them in Jogbari and we saw that there were trucks lined up because all these material that if it needs to come into India, it has to undergo customs and immigration check. Right. But when you go on ground, when you go to those villages, when you go to those no man's land, you see that how heavily these no man lands are inhabited. Mm -hmm. These people who are living there, they show us documents when you ask them. But these documents like Arunam Ali mentioned that are very much of the local residents mm. they they are uh, part of family uh, of people who have been living there for decades and these people are paid you know the agents who bring these people in they pay the local families uh, these people also come from very lower uh, social eco social economic strata and they, these are mostly rack pickers or laborers or cart pullers okay. and people who work in do as domestic helps in other houses so these people also are in need of money and using their economic condition they are lured by money or some other things and then they agree to uh, you know seed in these people into their family tree and mm -hmm. that is how they become un unidentifiable. All right, and with a very important update that you're bringing for our viewers, all this for money and the Simalchal border along uh, Nepal has become quite porous because this does seem to be a recurring and really, really worrying phenomena when it comes to illegal immigration. However, this is not just about illegal occupation of land, but also about the surge in population of one religion. Now, as per the IB and SSB sources, there has been a massive surge in Muslim population in the region due to illegal immigration. My colleague Anand Narsimhan explains the details. This happened uh, between, uh, say, 2004-2005 till about 2015-2016. Mm. More than 900 to 1100 mosque madrasas came over across Jammu and Kashmir, mm. but none of them were by local uh, people, yeah, yeah, local people. Local it was not local. Most of the Muezzins and most of the people who are there inside these mosques had come from uh, eastern uh, parts of our country, that is Bihar. Mm -hmm. And their antecedents were again questionable because they, they, they seem to have not been Indian citizens. They seem to have come from Bangladesh or, or from this, this region. This is an SOP that has been going on in different yes, parts of the country. And, that, and that's why the numbers also show. I'm just going to quickly look at these numbers. Uh, before we go back and bring in our captain Alok Bansal also, the demographic shift, the numbers spell it out. The Muslim population growth is unprecedented. 365.23%, 341.81%, and 295.36%. This is the government census data 1971 to 2011. So we're looking at the last 40 years, 71 to 2011. This is the growth. Again, in Purnia, 207%. This is 331%. Katihar, 180% and 342%. Madhepura 200% and uh, Muslims is 314.66%. Is, is 